Hi! Welcome to ElectroMaster. In this video, I'll show you step by step how to repair a circuit board from an Arctic refrigerator. On this channel, I provide clear and detailed explanations, and today we'll identify the problem, fix the faulty component, and test everything in the end. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with my new tutorials. Leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if this video helps you, give it a like, it motivates me to keep creating useful content for you. I start by visually inspecting the circuit board to identify any obvious defects, such as burned components, weak solder joints, or broken traces. After this inspection, I'll focus on the power supply circuit, checking the components that ensure proper energy delivery. This step is essential to understand if the board is receiving the necessary voltage to function correctly. I have identified the power supply circuit, so I will connect a cable and apply the 230 volt input voltage. This step allows me to test if the circuit is receiving the required energy and monitor the component's behavior to identify any issues. Before connecting the voltage, I will use a multimeter to check for any potential short circuits both on the primary side of the switch mode power supply and on the secondary side. To do this, I will measure the resistance between the circuit terminals on both the input, primary, and output, secondary, sides to ensure there are no short circuits that could cause damage. These checks are crucial to prevent serious issues when applying the voltage. It seems there is no short circuit, so I will apply 230 volt power to the board and measure the output voltage on the secondary side of the power supply. Using a multimeter, I will check if the output voltage matches the power supply specifications and if it is stable. This measurement is essential to verify that the power supply is providing the correct voltage needed for the proper operation of the circuit. As I observe, on the secondary side, I measure only 1.8 volts instead of 5 volts, which indicates that the power supply is not functioning correctly. This significant voltage difference suggests an issue in the switching circuit or with the component regulating the output voltage, such as a faulty transformer, regulator, or capacitor. Such an anomaly could result in insufficient power delivery to the circuit and requires further investigation to identify the exact cause of the failure. This switch mode power supply operates with the help of a current mode controller with a fixed frequency and a 700V MOSFET. The NCP101X controller, housed in a PDIP7 or SOT223 package, integrates all the necessary components to build a robust and cost-effective power supply. Since the NCP101X includes a capacitor in its circuit, I will begin by checking the condition of this capacitor. A faulty or low capacitance capacitor can significantly affect the performance of the power supply, causing instability in the output voltage, 
Therefore, I will measure its capacitance and resistance to check if it is functional. At first glance, the capacitor appears to be damaged or devalued, which may indicate a loss of capacitance or an internal fault. Therefore, to check it properly, I will remove the capacitor from the circuit board. This will allow me to measure its capacitance and internal resistance accurately without the influence of the circuit it's integrated into. After desoldering, I will use a multimeter or a capacitor testing tool to measure the capacitance and verify if its value is within the specified limits. As can be seen, this capacitor is compromised, with its capacitance significantly devalued, much lower than the specified value. Furthermore, the measured internal resistance is over 20 ohms, indicating an internal fault of the capacitor. A high internal resistance suggests that the dielectric is damaged, which can lead to reduced efficiency and instability of the power supply. Given these symptoms, it is clear that this capacitor needs to be replaced to restore proper circuit operation. I will replace the defective capacitor with a new one, but not before checking it. I have often encountered capacitors purchased from stores that, although new, had their capacitance significantly devalued, well below the tolerance limit specified by the manufacturer. This can affect the performance of the circuit and the stability of the power supply, even if the capacitor seems new. Therefore, I will measure the capacitance and internal resistance of the new capacitor using a multimeter or a capacitor tester to ensure it is within the correct parameters before installing it on the board.
I will power the board again to observe the result of the repair. After replacing the faulty capacitor, I will measure if the correct 5 volt output is now present on the secondary side of the power supply. Using a multimeter, I will check if the output voltage is stable and within the manufacturer's specified range. This step is essential to confirm that the power supply is functioning correctly and that the circuit is receiving the required voltage to operate properly. As can be seen, the 5 volt output is now present on the secondary side, confirming that the power supply is functioning correctly. This result shows that the repair was successful, and the replaced capacitor fixed the initial issue. I'm glad to see everything is now within the proper parameters, and the board is receiving the necessary voltage to operate optimally. It's another example of a well-executed repair, where accurate diagnosis and component replacement have restored the circuit's full functionality. Next, I will check the other capacitors on the board to ensure they fall within the manufacturer's specifications. For each capacitor, I will measure the capacitance and internal resistance, comparing them to the nominal value specified on the component. Any significant deviation from these values could indicate a fault, which could affect the circuit's performance. Additionally, I will visually inspect for signs of wear, such as bulging or electrolyte leakage, which could compromise the power supply's operation. After the inspection, it appears that all the other capacitors on the board fall within the manufacturer's specifications. The capacitance and internal resistance are within acceptable limits, and there are no visible signs of wear, such as bulging or electrolyte leakage. This confirms that the remaining components on the circuit are in good condition and will not affect the power supply's performance. Now, we can be sure that the power supply is operating correctly and stably, and the repair has been successfully completed. And there you have it, the power supply is now fully functional, and the Arctic refrigerator is ready to get back to work without any issues. I've replaced the faulty capacitor, checked all the essential components, and ensured everything meets the technical specifications. If this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe for more tutorials, and leave a comment with your thoughts or questions. If you've faced a similar issue, let me know how you solved it. Thank you for watching. And until next time, good luck with all your repairs. See you soon.